comes to mind when you think of feet? <laughs> Are you thinking of your own feet? Or perhaps the cute little feet of a newborn baby? Or actually, some of you <laughs> probably just went, ah, feet. I think I heard a few of you. This is uh, the ick response, the ick factor. And it's really common when you ask people about feet, when you mention feet. I'm curious to know whether you feel a bit differently by the end of this talk, of course, because when I think of feet, I go in all sorts of different directions. I mean, I do have those human responses, just like you, especially if I'm you know, needing a shower or something. And, you know, I also have a pair of feet, and, and they give me good days and bad days, just like you. But I'm also a podiatrist and a researcher. And I've spent over about 25 years working with the human foot. And honestly, I can tell you, I did not know there was this much to know about the foot, but here we are. <laughs> Today, I really want to invite you on my journey so that I can share some of the headlines or footnotes with you. <laughs> oh gosh, there's so much more. <laughs> because um, human feet, they've been telling our story throughout the ages. The footprints at Latoli in Africa were the first sign that our ancient cousins had become bipedal. That's standing, walking on two feet instead of four or swinging through the trees. Fast forward, and this time there were some more footsteps. Footprints left on the moon, this time in space boots, showing just exactly how far humans had travelled since those early days. The human foot is unique among the primates. They don't have arches like we do, and they have Big toes, a bit like our thumbs, they're really good for grasping. And in fact, right now, you might be thinking that's quite useful. So I think it's up to me to convince you that your feet are perfect for the job of being human. I think we need some fascinating foot facts to get us going. So here we go. Did you know that your feet will walk around 200 million steps in a lifetime? That's nearly five times around the world. And that a quarter of your bones are in your feet. That's 28 clusters of bones at the end of each of your legs, perfectly organized into three beautiful arches. And these are really good at making them adaptable to uneven ground. Of course, this made all the difference to us in our early history when we were foraging for food and hunting animals to exhaustion on uneven terrain. That adaptability meant that we were able to keep our balance. And as we kept our balance, we had our hands free. And having our hands free meant that we could carry our young, taking our community with us. We could fight off predators that might have met us along the journey. And we could carry our food back to safety, back to the family, away from animals who might want to steal it. So as well as being compliant and adaptable, feet had to be strong and resilient too. There's a tough band of tissue along the underside of the foot. It's called the plantar fascia. And as the arches load down, it stretches the plantar fascia. The foot then goes to push away, and that tension is released like an elastic band. It boosts the muscle power that we have, and it literally puts a spring into your step. And then there's the Achilles tendon, the strongest tendon in the human body. And it has a unique rope-like twist in its fibers. And this means that it can tolerate several times our body weight as we walk and as we run. It can also take the massive power of our calves when we sprint. If gravity had its way, our arches would be flattened to the ground. 
It's a gargantuan effort to keep our bones of our feet up away, suspended from the floor. It takes the work of around 1,000 ligaments, 21 muscles, and 13 load-bearing tendons to do the job. And so it really is no surprise that with age, our feet do flatten a bit. Not completely, and not always. And built into this complex anatomical machine, we have some energy-saving mechanisms too. It's really important that we conserve energy when we run and walk. These are called auto-support mechanisms, and they kind of do what it says on the tin. They help to support the arches of the feet. But the interesting thing is that they only require the ligaments, the bones, and the plantar fascia to do it. No muscles. There's no energy expended whatsoever. Simply put, our feet had to be tough and strong, adaptable and efficient to give us the best chance of survival. And every elite athlete today draws on this every time they leave the starting blocks and up to three times their body weight powers through their feet. And it's a paradox that despite this awesome strength, the foot is also sensitive. There are thousands of nerve endings embedded into the skin of the sole of the foot. And they're mapped to the brain to help us to know where we are in space and if we're in danger of falling. One of four critical sensory inputs of our spatial awareness. And the muscles, well, they do the usual job of controlling and creating movement. But in the foot, they also help to return the blood back up to your heart with every step you take, which is convenient because you don't want your blood pooling down in your feet. Simply put, our two specialized feet gave us a huge advantage and contributed to our survival as a species. It's no surprise then, certainly to me, that Leonardo da Vinci described the human foot as a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. There are so many more facts I could stand here and tell you. I can bore you senseless about feet all night if you really want to, and we'll, I'll see you out at the questions afterwards. But I think we do need to go back to that ick factor before we finish. Because, you see, babies, they don't have this hang-up. I mean, they have their feet in their mouths all the time. It's quite obvious they're delighting in them. And yet, there it is. A few years later, in the clinic, patients come in, and it presents as embarrassment and shame. They're worried that their feet might smell, or that they aren't nice to look at or handle and examine. It seems, then, that the ick factor may be a little bit of a learned social response because they do move on from this really quickly. They start getting down to what really matters to them, which is how their foot pain is affecting their lives. Podiatrists listen to stories all day long about how foot pain and foot problems cause people to live their lives differently. My colleagues and I we realise that actually, apart from the ick and the pain stories, that there's probably something more, and we don't know what people really think about their feet. So we decided to do some research to find out more. Now, this is a big subject. We know we have barely scratched the surface, but I'll tell you a little bit about what we've learned so far, because it came through loud and clear. We learned that people do have quiet concern for their feet. They're worried when they go shopping for shoes that they'll end up buying some shoes that they either don't fit or they don't really represent how they feel inside. Or if they're an athlete, that they're worried about going out and getting an injury on the pitch. We hear girls saying that they're not sure if their feet are pretty enough or if they're ugly and whether they'll be judged for that. And we know that people love the freedom of their feet, the get up and go, but they are worried that pain will stop them. We continued to listen, and we heard more. We heard about the journeys that feet take people on, all sorts of no good, I can tell you. 
But we also heard about the attraction and the fascination that people have with feet too. The more and more we listened, the more and more we've heard. And I can only describe emerging is the soul of the foot. Now, when you look closely and you listen carefully, you realize that the sole of the foot has been there hiding in plain sight all along. It's in our language, it's in our music, it's in our song lyrics, our phrases, our children's storybooks and films, and even in some TEDx talks that you may have heard today. Feet are part of our story. They're how we communicate, how we connect. To bring it into focus, I'm just going to get you to stop for a moment and imagine what it might be like to live without your feet. Because some of my patients, some people I know, have had this happen to them. And it's absolutely life-changing. It's identity-changing. It changes everything. I think this is actually a good place for me to hand this story over to you. I'd love you to go away and search the soul of your epic feat. Thank you.